All right, guys, let's talk about this coin Alchemy Pay. Now, Elrond is on Alchemy Pay. Chainlink is being integrated with Alchemy Pay. This thing just has too many partnerships for a big scam, doesn't it? Anyways, we're going to pull up on Alchemy Pay, see what they have been up to since the last two videos that I did on Alchemy Pay, which you can find them here. So if you're invested in Alchemy Pay or if you're not invested and you're interested, then this video is for you. But before we get into the video, can you do me just this one favor? Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, because that's what I say in every single one of my videos. But other than that, let's jump in. But let's talk about Alchemy Pay on Chainlink. So Alchemy Pay is now using Chainlink price fees to allow users to buy crypto on decentralized exchanges and to get loans in leading DeFi lending platforms directly from wallets using Alchemy Pay's ERC20 utility token, ACH. Now, I don't know who needs to hear this if they've never heard of Chainlink before, but Chainlink is a definite must-have in your portfolio because it is the connector of offline events to the blockchain. The blockchain cannot directly talk to offline events that happen. So things that happen in the real world, they can't be recorded onto the blockchain unless you use something like Chainlink. And Chainlink is the king of that space. So if you need to read price feeds, like let's say from stocks, then you need to use Chainlink. If you need to read info into the blockchain, you need to use Chainlink. It's necessary infrastructure, just like how Asians need rice to be white. Well, that's not exactly true, but you get what I'm saying. Now, I want to say this with full transparency that I like Chainlink a lot, but I don't own a single Chainlink. That's because whenever I go to buy it, I always get sidetracked with ETH or BTC. And then I end up buying Bitcoin and Ethereum. You know that photo where you have this guy walking with his girlfriend and then a hot girl walks by and he looks back? That's exactly the photo I'm talking about. That's what happened. Now, what the Chainlink price feed does, it helps assure users that the price that they're getting is the fair price. It's the fair market exchange rate when they are purchasing assets directly with their wallets on DEXs, decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, SushiSwap, and Fortube with their ACH, as well as collateralizing DeFi loans with ACH. Because the price of assets, that is not inherently available on the blockchain. Like I said, that stuff needs to be read back up to the blockchain from the real world. There needs to be a solution to fetch it off the blockchain that is off chain and then deliver it to the on chain which is on the blockchain for it to be referenced so that users can be sure of what they're buying when they're making transactions with different cryptos now the asset prices that they get are reflective of the average price from across trading environments not just one exchange and chainlink is the decentralized oracle that delivers these prices the smart thing about ACH or Alchemy Pay is that for retailers to use them, the retailers have to pledge ACH. They have to do that in order to accept cryptos. But it is still worth it because the cost of the transactions are about 30% of the cost of legacy systems. So think like credit cards. And partnership wise, Alchemy Pay is doing a stellar job because they already had partnerships with Shopify, Binance, and QF Pay, which represents altogether 2 million touch points. But integrating Chainlink is another plus one in confidence that Alchemy Pay is probably going to deliver because they have eyes looking on them. All right, so in this article by Elrond, it says that Elrond Network partners with Alchemy Pay to enable crypto to fiat payments, seeking to connect Elrond's eGold and ESDT to 200 million plus merchants via virtual cards and payment gateways. Now, I did not know that there was 200 million plus merchants. I find that very hard to believe because we just saw that with Shopify, Binance, and QF Pay, they had 2 million touch points. So I wonder what they're talking about there. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that Elrond partnered with Alchemy Pay to enable crypto to fiat payments now, did you? Yeah, that surprised me too. But I see this mainly as a play by Elrond, who's trying to connect to the ACH merchants via their gateway and their cards. This is a really smart play by Elrond because they want to integrate with Alchemy Pay that has 200 million merchants, according to the article, all over the world, ready to accept crypto to fiat, fiat to crypto payments. So yeah, if you don't already know from my previous ACH Alchemy Pay videos, Alchemy Pay's consensus protocol enables merchants to accept crypto payments via virtual cards, point of sale, POS terminals, web interfaces, and mobile apps. And apparently they're operating in 65 countries worldwide, including Canada, Japan, South Korea, 
Korea and the EU. So again, when did that happen? I have no idea. It just showed up to me and I'm like, whoa, really? It really came as a surprise to me. It's like going to bed with a woman only to be in bed with that woman only to find out that under the covers, they're not really a woman. And that has never happened to me. So don't go pointing fingers. So according to the article, Alchemy Pay will soon offer virtual cards for the likes of MasterCard and Visa that allow for the spending of cryptocurrency. And not only that, but this is just a start for allowing clients to issue cards that can be accepted on e-commerce platforms like Amazon and eBay. And these cards can also be linked to digital wallets like Google Pay or Apple Pay or PayPal, which pretty much enables the crypto to fiat payments. The goal for Elrond really is to make eGold and ESDT accepted cryptocurrencies at the hundreds of millions of online and offline merchants that are supported by Alchemy Pay. This is a really smart play for Elrond and it's interesting to see where they are trying to take the project because it's a really nifty idea to take Elrond and make it a transactional cryptocurrency on top of what it already does. And if you want more details on Elrond, then check out my video right there. And just on another note, I think that Elrond is a really great project. It could do smart contracts as well. And it was one of those that were dubbed earlier as an ETH killer. But just looking at their actions here makes something of an interesting case study. It makes you ask the question, are they pivoting because they think that they cannot compete against Ethereum? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, let's take a break from ACH, talk about some passive income. Now, with the government printing money like crazy because of COVID, they are actually devaluating the money that you have in your bank. Now, if you don't like that, like I don't like that, which you don't like that, which is why you're watching this video about cryptos, because a lot of us are parking money into cryptos. That's all good and all, but you still need income to come in while your money is sitting in cryptos and appreciate it. And a good thing to do is just start thinking about passive income streams. And I have made a page here that shows all the passive income streams that I currently have. And I'm currently going through and collecting more passive income streams. It's a game. So on that page, there's going to be some passive income streams that anyone can do. Some that cost $0 with zero risk, but you don't make that much money. But you know, some money is better than none. And there are some investments that does involve investment of money and does carry risk. But the returns are also much better when you compare it to the ones that had zero risk and zero money down. So go over to that page, check that out, and let me know what you think. Surprise, surprise, guys. I don't know if it's a surprise for you, but it is a surprise for me. But Gemini, which I used to buy AMP before, now supports Alchemy Pay. So this was nice to know. Oh, well, there's really not much to say here other than I'm a pretty big fan of the Winklefoss twins because they had the foresight to really buy into Bitcoin when it was selling for pennies on the dime. They also started Gemini, which was the only place for US Americans to buy AMP before AMP got into Coinbase. So I am pretty confident about their choice of offerings. Well, all except for Doge and SHIB. SHIB is not on there yet, but Doge is. And the funny thing is that they offer ACH now, which is really cool. Now we all know that for centralized exchanges, it is purely a business. They will list tokens that are hot and have demand and are high liquidity because when users trade them, they can make money off of fees. And ACH is one of those tokens. Now the question remains that they add it because they can earn money through fees or that they believe that it's a great project. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so we're gonna take a look at ACH on TradingView. You can see that over here, they made a high here around the 6th of August, which was around 20 cents. I think that was around the time when they probably released on Coinbase because since the Coinbase, they really just pumped. And since then, and they've dropped back down to about six, six, seven cents. So we're gonna find some levels. So if you wanna buy into this thing, you gotta find out where is a good price to buy. So it looks like they really found support right here. So let's just put a line over there. So that line is about 0 0.063 cents. And that's pretty much where we see support. So you can see that over here, they really just dropped down when we had a flush and it picked back up and now it's really hovering and consolidating at that point. So we could really see that point as the big support line for ACH. Now that we have our support line, we could draw our FIB with a FIB retracement tool. So we couldn't go to the bottom here because that's when the pump really happened and then take it all the way to the top because that's how we draw our FIB. So good price for this to go back to. The price that we're looking to go back to is at the 0.5 and the 0.618. So right now, according to the FIBS, this is underpriced because the average price, according to the price movement that it has made, should be around one cent to seven cent or seven cent to one cent, however you want to call it. So right now at 
six seven cents it's a pretty good price to buy if you want to buy it well there you guys go that is my review on what's been going up with ach now remember if you're buying into this what i drew there is that the support price for this is six cents to the three one hundredth so if that means anything to you then there you go but anyways Remember, disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor and this was just a very simple technical analysis. If you want more, then you can check out IM Academy where I learned all this stuff. But other than that, those are your prices. If you've enjoyed this video, then please smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and check out these other videos on cryptocurrencies and passive income. And I'll see you next time. Peace!